A hidden Easter egg in Android opens up a settings section filled to the brim with settings that are made for developers. Up next, I'm gonna show how some of those options may be useful for everyone. Hands-on Android is brought to you from LastPass Studios. You're focused on security, but are your employees? LastPass can ensure that they are by making access and authentication seamless, whether they're working in the office or remote. Visit lastpass.com slash twit to learn more. This is Twit. This episode of Hands-On Android is brought to you by Hover. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. Welcome to Hands-On Android, I'm Jason Howell. Now, you may have noticed by now on this show that some of the fun stuff that we dive into together has to do with a special menu in settings called Developer Options. This menu isn't even there by default. You have to enter Android's very own Konami code in order to grant access to the menu. That's because, being real, most users don't really need the options that appear there. They are, after all, intended for developers. But that doesn't mean that some of those options aren't useful outside of development contexts. And I'm going to show you how to open that menu up and point out a few options and features that can give you a little extra power on your Android device. Let's take a look. So the first thing that you want to do with developer options is actually open it up. If I go to settings right now and look for it where it's supposed to, where, where it will appear when we activate it, uh, it's not here. It's in the advanced section of system and you can see there's no developer options there. So how do you do it? Well, on my Pixel 4 XL, I go to about phone, build number, and I tap it a number of times. You can see there, it says I'm one step away from being a developer. Go ahead and take my phone out of screen because you don't get to see my pin and put it back, and it says now I am a developer down at the very bottom. Isn't that nice? That's all it took. And now when I go into the system settings, open up advanced, you can see developer options down there. So that gives you access to the menu so that you can check out some of the things that I'm gonna point out right now. So let's dive right in. And here are a few of my go-tos when I'm walking through developer options. First and foremost, this one is possibly one of the most important ones. It's one of the ones that comes up a lot of times when you're uh, working with Android on a somewhat deeper level, and that's USB debugging. Uh, this is really important because it opens up the USB communications into the device so you can do extra things, that so you can send commands from, say, your Mac or your PC using terminal. You can do something with ADB, which is part of the developer tools that give you access into your phone on a deeper level to set permissions. If people are, are thinking about rooting their device, this is kind of the avenue through which you go to do that. So turning that on is often a, a necessity in order to do certain things. It does open your phone up, though, and you might not want that all the time. So it's it's a good idea when you're not using it, when you're not using it for something specific, to turn it off. And if you have given any sort of authorizations through that USB debugging feature in the past, you can go ahead and revoke those. That way, any legacy uh, authorizations aren't just hiding in your inside of your phone. Just make you feel a little bit better that way. All right, so running down from the top here, stay awake. This is handy. Uh, and I would say I used to use this a lot more before they had ambient displays, but this is handy at keeping your display on anytime you happen to have it plugged in and charging. I just found that sometimes I'm at my desk and I want my phone display on at all times. I want all that contextual information. So anytime I plug it in, that would keep the display from turning off after 30 seconds or however long. Um, and it's plugged in, so it's not like it's, it's taking any battery in order to do it. Like I said, ambient displays maybe make this a little less necessary in my life, but maybe it's something that you want to check out. So find that, that is stay awake. Uh, let's see here, automatic system updates. If you do not want your phone to update automatically for you in the background, then this is a feature that you want to know about. I keep this off because personally, I want to know what's happening with my phone before it happens. I don't want to suddenly find that I have to reboot my phone and everything changes on the next boot up. Other people like things to change magically for them. They don't want to have anything to do with what's happening behind the scenes. They just want it to happen and they trust Google to do that. So this is a setting that if you keep this off, those automatic updates won't happen automatically for you. You'll get notified about them instead. and You can make the choice at that point whether you want to do them or not. I find that. Uh, pretty handy. Okay, this one's pretty difficult 
uh, to see at first glance. It's pretty easy to miss. Quick settings, developer tiles. Most of these developer tiles that you find in here aren't going to be very useful to anyone outside of development uh, cases. But this bottom one is actually pretty interesting. Sensors off. When I go ahead and toggle that and I go into my quick settings tiles, you can see a new quick setting for sensors off. And it does exactly what you might think in this day and age of wanting to lock down our privacy and permissions and all that on our phone. If I turn sensors off, this literally shuts off all of the sensors on the phone. So if I was to, for example, try and launch the camera app, it won't do it. It literally will prevent the camera app on the phone from launching because it's turned off the camera sensor entirely. Now, this is a brute force option, yes, but nice to have if you want to know that you can cut off all access to all the sensors on your device and just know that it's going to happen. And it, you know, it puts it up into the quick settings, so it makes it really easy to jump right to it, turn it on, turn it off whenever you happen to need it. And uh, there it is. Go ahead and get back into developer options here. All right, now down into, let's see here. If you happen to have the Pixel 4 XL, like I have the Pixel 4, then you have a display that is capable of 90 hertz refresh. Thing is, it's a dynamic change that happens behind the scenes by default. It's not always 90 hertz. Sometimes it's 60 hertz. Google does its best to kind of dynamically shift this around depending on the app that you're using, uh, the scenario that you happen to be in. And so this force 90 hertz refresh rate literally does that. It forces it into 90 hertz refresh rate mode and keeps it at that, at that setting. The thing that you want to know about this is that some apps just don't play nicely with 90 hertz. And you might run into an app that gives you a total blank screen instead of giving you the app content because you're forcing 90 hertz refresh. So you might run into some bugginess here, but it is nice to have everything nice and smooth with 90 hertz refresh. So if you want to lock it in, you can. Just know that there are some side effects uh, when you do that. This episode of Hands on Android is brought to you by Hover. In this vulnerable time, stay in touch by creating a domain that represents you. Choose from over 400 domain name extensions. If you're an artist, Hover allows you to create a domain to showcase your talent with the extension .art. Get a custom domain for each of your art pieces. .art can be used as a catalog to showcase each design with descriptions and details. Get your creative juices flowing and let Hover give you the stage. Visit hover.com slash twit to get 10% off your first purchase of any domain extension for the entire first year. That's hover.com slash twit. All right, the next one has to do with your mobile data and it's keeping this active, the mobile data that's happening behind the scenes. And this has to do with handoff, handoff between Wi-Fi and your mobile data. With this off, if you're connected to a Wi-Fi signal and things get weak and your phone detects that, that Wi-Fi signal is not as strong as it was and it wants to jump over to mobile data, it has to actively turn back on that mobile data and then jump over which can take a little bit longer. If you have mobile data always active set to on, it keeps your mobile data connected even when it's not actively using it at that point. That way, if your Wi-Fi data starts to slow down, it jumps immediately over. There's no real like lag time between that handoff. Things just move a little bit faster, a little bit more seamless. So I like to make sure that mobile data is always active uh, behind the scene. All right, default USB configuration. Now you may notice sometimes when you plug your phone into a computer, you get a little pop-up on your phone that says, what do you want to do right now? Do you want to transfer data? Do you want nothing to happen? Is this a MIDI device? It's hardly ever in a MIDI device, let's be honest. Uh, do you want to be tethering through USB? You get this menu, and I know for in my case, most of the time if I'm plugging my phone into my computer, I'm doing it because I want to transfer files. I'm not doing it because I want to charge up my phone. That might, use case might be different in your case. But you can set that as a default here so that anytime I plug my phone into a computer, and in this case, you know, Android Auto uh, would also qualify here, it automatically jumps over into that file transfer mode, which is what I would use that for mostly. So this is obviously you know, depends on what you use your phone for the most, but you have the ability to set that default here that you may not know, have known about otherwise. And finally, down in the input section is show taps. I've loved this one for years because it makes creating uh, screencasts 
and recording your screen, it makes that kind of an experience just a little bit better. What it does is when it's on, it's gonna be kind of hard to show, but do you see that little dot when my finger is on the screen? Anywhere my finger happens to go underneath my finger, there's a little dot squirreling around. And if I'm recording my screen for any particular reason, say I wanna send someone a demo of how to do something, when I have taps on, it allows the viewer to see where my finger is at any given time. Without it, it's like things start, you know, I, I tap a, a part of the screen to select something and it's like a ghost did it and it suddenly appears. There's no indication that that was a finger or even where the finger press is just that thing suddenly got pressed somehow. And with this, it gives a little bit more of a trail, a more of a traceable action as far as where your fingers are on the display. So it has a, a limited use case, but I definitely appreciate that it's all in there. And outside of that, I mean, there's a lot of other stuff in here. Um, our engineer here, Burke, loves these, uh, the scale and transition animation uh, adjustments. You can remove these to kind of make things a little bit faster in the interface. It removes the animations. Up at the top, Burke also showed off this section for running services, which shows you different apps and services that are occupying your memory. So it can give you an idea if things are slowing down, what might be running at that moment to slow things down. I'd be careful in here just turning things off at random, but good to know that information is there. Whole lot of contextual information about how your device runs on a deeper level can be found in developer options. And finally, Let's say you don't want this anymore. You want it to disappear. You don't want it in your menu at all, or you want to show someone else how to do the Konami code to open it up. Up at the very top is a little switch. Once I flick that to off and I exit the menu, it disappears from my system settings. Uh, nowhere to be found until I unlock it again by tapping the build number seven times. Now keep in mind these options aren't necessarily all for you. At the same time, most of the stuff you find here isn't capable of completely destroying your phone. So consider this menu in the intermediate to slightly advanced level of Android access. It opens up the capability to go deeper into your device in new and sometimes uncertain ways. So use with caution. Send me all of your questions to handsonandroid at twit.tv. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube and to the podcast the old fashioned way. You just head to twit.tv slash HOA and you'll find all the information to do that on the show page. Take care of yourself, everyone. See you next week on Hands on Android.